Let's have some fun. Okay, so let's get a couple things straight here. Number one, the Dragon Ball Z video game franchise is something very near and dear to my heart. I've experienced tears of joy, tears of frustration, but mostly tears of confusion. Tiamcha. Number two, the Dragon Ball series, including GT, is by far my favorite anime series of all time. Don't challenge me on this because I will defend the Z Fighters to the death. Number three, I have always wanted to be a Super Saiyan, and have a Nimbus, and a Scouter, and yes, fire a Kamehameha wave. I just wanted to start with this disclaimer so that I could tell everyone that no matter how much I love the series, I will not let nostalgia affect my grading scale or the rating or be uh, harsh on this game. I'm going to try and look at it in the light of somebody who not only has never seen Dragon Ball Z before, but has uh, just likes video games in general. Um, that being said, I do know Dragon Ball Z, and I know all the stories, and I understand everything like it. I haven't read the manga, and I'm gonna one day count me on that. Uh, yeah, that, that's it. So without further ado, here's the review. Peggy 12. Okay, now that that's out of the way, Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z is one of the most, if not the most, ambitious Dragon Ball Z games to date. Upon the trailer for this game, I was filled with delight and glee at seeing a real-life Super Saiyan God kicking the sphincter off of this chihuahua-looking guy. Look at him. He screams punt me in the face. Not only was I excited for that, but I was also on the watchtower for a huge defining feature of this game, the multiplayer. And I'm not talking your normal Shenron, I choose you nonsense, no no no. I'm talking full 4v4 action with key blasts screaming across the sky, cracks like thunder from crippling punches, and blurs of battle ensuing a la Dragon Ball universe. Ah, smells like Dragon Balls to me. It's time for Shenron to turn his head to the side and cough as we examine this Battle of Z. If you don't know the story for Dragon Ball Z, then I'll make some joke about how that's inexcusable and tongue in cheekingly pretend to wait as you watch the whole series. Did you do it? I know you didn't. Okay, so for those of you who haven't watched the series, Dragon Ball revolves around the hero Goku who is the self-titled Savior of the Innocent. Battle of Z starts you from the beginning of the Saiyan Saga, where an alien race of elite fighters reach Earth in an attempt to conquer and sell the planet. As an added bonus for the Saiyans, they discover one of their own is already amongst the Earthlings. Goku, as it turns out, was originally a Saiyan sent from the Saiyan home planet Vegeta to rule the Earth as an infant. But like most great heroes, he gets knocked on the head when he was a baby. This bump made him lose all Saiyan instincts of destruction as well as most of his motor skills for a couple weeks. But Goku really didn't care if he was a Saiyan. He considered himself a citizen of Earth, and who was gonna question him? Oh, I almost forgot to mention. Goku has trained his whole life to be the best fighter in the world so he can defend the weak. So naturally, he got beat up a lot as a kid. But in a very well-written twist of fate, due to Goku's Saiyan blood, every time he gets beat near to death and recovers, he becomes twice as strong as before. Goku is now one of the few characters that people say could take on the Man of Steel, and personally, I believe that Goku would absolutely mop the floor with that red, blue, and gold Boy Scout, full ride, tight wearing show off. But hey, that's just my opinion. Battle of Z takes you through the elaborate twists and turns of the famous series from the perspective of the good and evil sides of each story, up until about after the Boo Saga, where this game does something unprecedented. Instead of following the much despised GT story, it goes with the new canon of the series, making Goku into a god. Suck it, Superman! This is a very well-needed changeup to the monotony that the DBZ games were turning into. However, the way the story was implemented seemed extremely lazy and was not very well thought out at all. The story took you through a web of events, making you have to pass one event to get to another, 
and so on and so on, but in a way that took you so far out of the game that I found myself wishing I could take a break to the story and do something else. Which, there isn't really much else. And you'd think that the saving grace would be the cutscenes, right? Well, <laughs> Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his wrong level It's over 9,000! Also unfortunate was the lack of creativity with the challenges that the story implemented. They make it out to be something that will grow to be more complex when in fact the only variation to kill all enemies is kill all enemies or survive the allotted time. You mean, I have to stay alive to beat a video game? Well, how about them fruits of might? Another main complaint I have is the lack of some key elements of the story such as, but not limited to, the Tree of Might, Lord Slug, Bio Broly, and oh yeah, where the hell is Vegito? My verdict for the story? Meh. Lazy. Dragon Ball has always been known for filler with nonsensical shots that don't really pertain to the story, and Battle of Z is no different. At the beginning of every fight, you are presented with the setting in which you are fighting with a series of a couple shots of the terrain. I'm guessing this is to help the player with the level design while still having that DBZ feel and... Yeah, it doesn't help in the slightest. The maps are much too generic to even remotely memorize. Not that you'd need to in the first place since there's literally a button that locks onto the closest enemy. But as far as the overall look of the game, I think they nailed it. The heavy outlines on the terrain make them very visible, which is a big help when fighting close to unbreakable walls. And that's right, Battle of Z brought back the breakable terrain feature from previous games, though it is worth noticing sending enemies flying into rocks does not do more damage. That being said, it still feels pretty great sending enemies flying into a giant rock and having it crumble from the force. But there is a danger to this. All rocks, breakable or not, look nearly the same, meaning you could be going for a combo and accidentally ruin it by kicking the enemy too far. It's a minor annoyance that can actually save you as well, so... Eh. Giant ape fights are back in this game as well, which add a breakup to the gameplay, which is well needed at times. But giant apes aren't really the bosses. As a matter of fact, unless you know the DBZ story, you'll have no idea you're fighting a boss when you actually are. No stylistic changes really hint you in, unless you're counting, you know, kind of a cutscene that may seem a tad menacing. But then you find out that there's actually a second form to the bastard, and you're like, Oh, this is confusing. Move over, Ego Raptor, cause that's DBZ in a nutshell. As far as the characters go, unfortunately DBZ games have taken a turn for the worse since the wonderful Budokai series. Battle of Z boasts that there are 70 playable characters. Now, three of these are actually download-only DLC that you can't buy anywhere. You actually had to go to the store and get them. So if you didn't pre-order them at a specific place, you're screwed. But 67, still pretty impressive, right? <laughs> no. The reason why there are so many characters characters is because there are no transformations in game. So let's say I'm Goku, <laughs> I wish, but let's say I am him, and I want to go Super Saiyan mid game. I have to exit the game, wait for the load screen, go to character select screen, and select Super Saiyan Goku. Yeah. Don't worry, don't worry. I recounted the roster varying in the transformations that should be in game, and I got 41 characters including download onlys. And this is even letting sword trunks be different from armored trunks. The saddest part about this cut from the game is that it takes away from the whole idea of Dragon Ball Z, which is growing and becoming stronger and fighting to get there. Transforming from the simplest version of yourself to the most extravagant and beautifully glorious version of yourself. Not being different, just being better. I just want my old DBZ back. 120 new episodes, did you hear about that? I'M EXCITED! Alright, I have to give this game props for standing out. Battle of Z is definitely different. Not just from Dragon Ball Z games, oh no. From just about every other game out there, you control your character from a truly 3D perspective per the norm of Dragon Ball games. You move up and down as well as directionally. Every character has a boost that makes their travel faster, and some characters actually have techniques that let them teleport directly to their enemy. This can be very handy. So you're probably thinking, 
Oh, it's just another one of those crappy fighting games. You fight a guy and do a Kamehameha over and over, and you win. No! Battle Z does something no other fighting game has ever done, and has put not only statistics into the game, but strategy as well. There are four different types of characters in the game. Fighting, which are your heavy hitters and combo specialists that are designed for close combat. Key Blast, which are characters better suited to distant combat using Key Blast or special attacks. Support, which are characters designed for healing players as well as feeding them a steady supply of energy. And Interference, which basically act as punching bags, putting themselves in harm's way to draw away from other characters or just to annoy and break up the combos. So it's no surprise that Krillin is part Interference. Oh, and it's worth mentioning that characters can have up to two attributes at once. This mechanic really makes the game. As to get a better score in the mission, you need to plan a strategy with the characters you have and are going to face to optimally deal with the situation. Sounds complicated? Yes, it can be. And it doesn't help that the enemy AI is vastly smarter than your partner AI. Speaking of the computer, there is one teensy tiny detail that makes this game baloney at times. The retry system. Due to the very different 4v4 mechanics this game harbors, a system was required to give a need to help your partners that also punishes you when you don't. So they did this. Each character is given a set amount of retries depending on the strength of said character. When a computer loses all its health, it faints, giving you 10 seconds to resuscitate it. If you don't do so, it takes a retry to come back. Same goes for you, but you only get 5 seconds and the computer has to come and get you. And, uh, well, since the AI is about as smart as Emperor Pilaf, who was named after a delicious flavor of rice aroni, your partner's helping you almost never happens. When you lose all your retries and die, that's it. You fail the mission, as expected. But when your partners die after losing all retries, you still lose the mission. That's right. When your friends die, you can't fight on because we all know that never happens in Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> More ludicrous than the lives function is the controls themselves. I already told you about the movement, which is just in my opinion too slow, but I mean the combat in particular. Triangle, or Y. That's it. That is the one and only melee button. You punch and hit with just that. And I don't mean hold it for a charge and then, you know, do something else to get a different combo. No, 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 no. I mean tap it as fast as you want or as slow as you want because you're getting the same combo either way. Then you have your Key Blast button, which is useless unless you're a Key Blast type. On the flip side, however, I believe that Battle of Z has the best implementation of special moves so far. All you need to do is hold L1 or respective LB. Block. And you just hold block. Then you just press different buttons and they'll do different abilities, like heal partners, charge an enemy, teleport, which I mentioned earlier, and send heavy Key Blasts as well as many other fine things. No combat is possible without this little button right here. This button is known as the lock-on button. This makes it so that you can hit enemies. And that is to say that if you are not locked onto an enemy, you will punch right past them. It's kind of annoying, but hey, whatever. The difficulty increases as you play. But as you play the story, you gain cards that give your character special attributes as well as boosts to help you out. This adds a slight collectathon as well as rounds out the idea of character statistics. As well as slightly gives you back the feeling of progression that they took away from you from, from becoming a Super Saiyan. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take this to the final review. <laughs> Dear Purunga, this is a complicated game to score. It was innovative in a lot of ways with its new style gameplay, though it seemed suspiciously reminiscent of Naruto games. But still, the 4v4 playability is unique and the strategy elements were perfectly executed, though the retry system flopped. The opening title of the game made me blush, it was so awesome. But I'm a fanboy, so... The music, other than the intro, is very forgettable, and the stages aren't remarkable either. Though, occasionally at the end of a fight, you will be called upon to share your energy with someone else on Earth. You have to mash the Key Blast button as fast as you can to send all of the energy you have amassed over the fight. The more energy you send, the more points you collect to buy super items and other hidden goodies. Only problem is that's the only way you can get those points, so prepare to mash that button a whole lot. And maybe you're confused when I said share your energy with someone else on Earth. I meant that. Literally, Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z offers exclusive content to people connected to the internet. 
You can get weekly rare items as well as the other items I mentioned earlier. You can also buy an instant kill, which is your ultimate attack in-game. And yes, I do mean buy, as in spend hard-earned points. This may seem annoying, and you're right, it is. But ultimately, you can see why they made these moves so hard to attain, because they're basically instant Z rank on any mission. Battle of Z is very well thought out sometimes, and other times it isn't like at all. All being said, I had a wonderful time playing this game as an avid fan, but I'm not sure I'd recommend it to someone who doesn't know Dragon Ball Z. For a fun and unique game that needs minor improvements, I give Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z <laughs> a 7 out of 10. Hey, maybe I do have some key in me after all. I'm a f***ing nerd. Wow, this review took me a while to make. I had to really put some extra thought, but I think it paid off. If you did too, then you should like, favorite, comment, and subscribe, as well as share. If you didn't, then I'd love to hear some constructive criticism. That's right, review this review. And if you want to review the review prior to this review, check out my review of Mario Kart Double Dash. And if you want to watch the Couchcom gang, including myself, play Scott Pilgrim, then click here. And don't feel like you need to pick between the two either. You can do both! Thanks everyone for watching, and have a great day.